Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the Woogles.io site and going over some of the site's most important features. This was a video requested by several of my viewers. Now for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Woogles.io, which is typically just referred to as Woogles by the Scrabble community, is a uh, great site to play online Scrabble. It's been around for a couple of years now and it was created by a team of top Scrabble players, uh, some of whom were, uh, were coders, uh, web designers, and uh, just really smart people who did uh, an amazing job creating this site. So definitely go ahead and uh, check it out if you haven't yet. I'll put a link to the site in the description. But what I'm going to be doing today is basically just going through uh, how, to, how to use the site. Uh, I'll be going through some of the more niche features, but trying to focus mostly on the, the basics so that anyone after watching this video can uh, pretty much go and uh, play Scrabble and uh, do what they need to do to have a good time on Googles. So I think uh, let's start with, given that it is a Scrabble site we're talking about, how do you play a game of Scrabble? And uh, the key here is going to be this middle pane over here where you see it says play and watch on the top and it's currently showing me available games. So these available games are, uh, are games that other players have uh, put out, basically put out a seek request to see if anybody wants to play them in their desired format. Uh, we'll talk about in just a minute how you can put out a seek request of your own. So here I see there's uh, one game currently available, and uh, what this info is going to tell me, it's the, the player, so the, the username or handle of the person who's speaking or seeking the game. It's going to tell me their, their rating, the lexicon, the time control, as well as the challenge rule. Uh, so here I see the player is uh, GR Bots, they're rated uh, 1980. It's the uh, NWL dictionary, uh, time is regular, so basically it's, uh, it's sort of like chess, the time control is split up into, I believe, Ultra Blitz, Blitz rapid and regular. Uh, this means it's 15 minutes with a uh, one minute of allowed overtime. So you're allowed one minute uh, of overtime with a penalty before you forfeit the game. And then finally, X2 is the challenge rule. So that means this is a double challenge. If I wanted to play that game, I would uh, click it. But of course, uh, I'm in the middle of recording this video, so not going to be playing a game of Scrabble right now. So if I wanted to put out my own request, maybe uh, I didn't like this game, depending on uh, I thought the rating wasn't good for me, or I just didn't think the format was what I wanted, I could hit this create a game button over here, and then it's going to give me all kinds of uh, options for parameters. So uh, game type, uh, these are some variants which I'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, generally if you want to just play Scrabble, you're going to hit classic. Dictionary, there's uh, there's several options here. The the most common I would expect that uh, people watching this video will, will use are the, the World English, this is uh, Collins or CSW, and then uh, North American English, which is NWL and, uh, and played in NASPA and WGPO tournaments. The uh, the challenge rule, uh, double is the is what's the most common for NWL. You'll usually see five points or 10 point penalty in the uh, the Collins games. There's a few other ones here. Uh, void is, is often used when there's a big rating disparity. So basically what void means is there's no challenges. The computer doesn't let you play a word unless it's valid. So it's basically like words with friends for those who are familiar with, uh, with that game. You're actually not even allowed to play anything that's not a word. A uh, single challenge means there's no penalty for challenging a word. And then the uh, triple is sort of a, a fun extreme variant where if you lose a challenge, you actually lose the whole game. So this is never actually played in tournaments or anything like that, but it can be uh, a fun thing to do with some friends on the site. So if you challenge a word and it's good, you lose the game. And if you uh, play a phony and it gets challenged off, you lose the game immediately. Other options here, uh, initial time. So this would be a pretty long game right now. It's, uh, it would be a 30 minute game that I'd be looking for. And then for time setting, you can uh, you can either do the maximum amount of overtime. So here, uh, just like the other seek that was there, I'm saying you're allowed one overtime minute before you lose the game. So here I'd be uh, allowed one overtime minute. I'd get a 10 point penalty if I went over up to a minute, but then if I went over more than the minute, I would automatically lose the game. So if I wanted to mirror typical NWL tournament format, it would be 25 minutes and then uh, up to 10 minutes of overtime. So this means if I go more than 10 minutes over, I would forfeit. Uh, you can also use increment. This is pretty rare in Scrabble, very common in chess. But what this does is if I had a 10 second increment, every time I make a play, another 10 seconds will be added to my clock. Uh, you can choose whether to make it rated or not. And then finally, the rating range of which uh, you want your opponent to be. So uh, I guess my rating right now is 1984, which is why that's the center of this range. And uh, the, the widest range you're allowed to select on a seek is within 500 points of your current rating. But if I wanted someone a bit closer, I would maybe do uh, plus or minus 200 or plus or minus 150. And then I hit create game and my game would appear right here on this, uh, on this board. 
So that's how you would, uh, would seek a game to the general playing public on Woogles. If I wanted to play a specific person, then what I would do is hit match a friend. It doesn't actually have to be somebody in my friends list over here. Uh, it could be anybody. So uh, if I wanted to, uh, to search for someone, I'm just going to type in their, their name over here. And then uh, basically just like we saw in the previous screen, I'm going to select all my parameters and then hit create game and, uh, and wait for them to accept it. If someone sends you a individual match request, then it should uh, appear here. I believe a sound will will be made, like a, a ding to notify you of the request, and then it'll appear here in a, a separate section from all the other publicly sought games. If I wanna play a computer, then I'm gonna hit this, uh, this option here. There's several different levels I can choose. Uh, so master, which is hasty bot, that's the top level bot, and that's the one that I'm currently playing against in my 100 game series. There's a, uh, also several other bots all the way down to beginner, and you can kind of get a sense of all of their skill levels based on their uh, average over here. And then everything else is basically the, the same as before. I'm gonna select the, uh, the, the, the variant, the dictionary, the time control, and all these other parameters, and then hit create game. So I'll, uh, I'll show you how to actually play the game in just a second, but on this screen, I do wanna just quickly address the other tabs. Over here on the left is the, the lobby screen. So this shows me all of the people who are currently online. First, it lists all of my friends. So these are people who I've, uh, who I typically uh, know from from tournaments or uh, have played a lot on online. And uh, it's basically if you if there's someone you think you might want to play often, it's a, a good way to add them there so that you can uh, quickly see if they're available. Uh, the this uh, this one friend I have, GR Bots, is uh, is online. All of the other friends, as you can see, since they're italicized and grayed out, are currently offline. If I scroll all the way down here, now I'll see the, the rest of the players in the lobby. So uh, let's, I'll just click the, the top one. If I, uh, if I click on this, I have several options. I can start a chat with them. I can uh, see their profile. I can also match them, which will uh, take me to that same match friend screen that I was on before. I can, uh, I can add them as a friend. So if I, I know this person, I wanna add them, I can do that here. And uh, hopefully you won't need to use this, but if uh, for some reason you have an issue with someone, if they're uh, unsportsmanlike or other, otherwise uh, you don't want to interact with them anymore, you can block them here and that'll render them incapable of uh, sending you match requests or messages. So again, don't, I do not encourage using that, that feature if you can uh, help it, but of course if you, if you need to for some reason, uh, that's, that's why it's there. Uh, the chat screen over here is uh, basically we'll, we'll show you all of the, uh, the different people you've recently been chatting with. And if I, uh, I want to start a, a new chat, I'll just click this button over here and then I can uh, find a player uh, over here. It's, uh, it's usually a little bit easier to go, uh, to go back to the player screen and, uh, and find the player there in the lobby, but this works very well too. Another feature on this page over here is the watch screen. So if I want to observe a game that's currently in progress, uh, I can click this and uh, there's usually quite a lot of games here. This is going to show me every single game that's currently being played, usually in the descending order of rating. So I'll just sort of scroll through and if there's a specific game I'm, I'm looking for, I'll, uh, I'll kind of scroll through until I find that or if not, then uh, if you want to just watch a uh, high rated game, then you can basically just uh, click this and it'll uh, it'll take you to that game right here so I can uh, I can literally watch it as it's going on. Now uh, let's go back to the main screen. So if I uh, if I start a game, I'll just uh, I won't actually play, but I'll start a game against the computer just to sort of show how the playing process works. Uh, so I'll start a 15 minute game, and then basically as soon as the game starts, you'll hear that uh, that dinging sound. And in this case, the computer was first and uh, and played the word bewig. So this is what the actual playing interface looks like. Uh, you can see a, a game chat over here. So uh, of course I'm playing a bot, so it doesn't make much sense to the chat. Let's say I wanted to wish him uh, hi and good luck. I'll, I'll type that over here and uh, the, the, bot, the bot is not gonna respond, but if you had an opponent who was a human and they responded, that would appear over here. There's a, a notepad over here. So if I wanna take notes during games, like let's say sometimes I'll, I'll write, you might wanna write down uh, the, the rack in alphabetical order. Like let's say I'm looking for an eight letter word through the E, I might uh, write all these letters down to try to see if I have a uh, word through those tiles. Now, if I want to uh, make a play, I'm basically just going to uh, put my cursor on the board. So I'm not really going to um, going to try to to play well here or anything. Like, let's just say I want to make the word maze to this e in in the wig. Uh, what I'm going to do is put the cursor right here, since that's where my word is going to start, and then just type in the M A Z. 
you'll see it'll show me the 30 here. That means I'm scoring 30 points. And then uh, if I wanted to make that play, then I can either uh, hit this play button or I find it's simpler to just hit enter. And then we'll see that the bot uh, makes its next play, which happens to be a bingo in this case. Uh, over here on, on the right, on the top right, I'll see the, the list of different plays that were, were made. This uh, heart symbol is given to any bingos, and I'll see sort of the, the running total of plays and their scores. The, this screen over here shows the different tiles that are still in the bag, so this is important to keep an eye on if you're trying to figure out what the pool looks like or uh, towards the end of the game what your uh, opponent has. So this basically would mirror a tracking sheet in a over-the-board tournament. It also shows the aggregate number of vowels and consonants and scene, which can be very helpful. And finally, on the bottom right, we'll see the names and ratings and current scores and time of each player. So, of course, the bot is going to stay at 15 minutes for the whole game since it moves instantly. But I'll see now that I have uh, only 12 minutes and change left to play the rest of this game. So uh, I'll just make one more move here. I'll go ahead and play Hinotic through this T. Uh, and then, so I, uh, I don't, I'm not going to play through the, the rest of this game. But uh, what I'll, I'll show you is just a few other features I might use. So if I want to exchange tiles, right, like let's say, uh, and exchanging would be a terrible play here, but let's just say I wanted to exchange uh, a J and an H. I would click this exchange box, and then uh, I would hit the H and then the J, and then hit exchange over here. Uh, a faster way of getting this, especially if you're playing a Blitz game, you can kind of see if you're hovering over, there's this keyboard shortcut, which is a, a four. So if I hit the four, I'll have that same exchange screen. So I could basically just hit four HJ, enter, and that would make an exchange. I'll just go ahead and do that. And then if I wanted to challenge uh, a word, I'm gonna hit this button or, uh, or a three. So either way, and then uh, it'll come up with this pop-up, are you sure you wish to challenge? So uh, if you're in a Blitz game, what you can do is if you wanna challenge that, uh, I'll challenge here just to demonstrate. Of course, uh, I know that's a word, especially since the bot is playing it, but then I would hit yes or enter, uh, and then the challenge will go through. If I wanted to pass my turn, which uh, usually wouldn't happen until the end game, but uh, you never know, then I can either hit uh, a two and then enter, or uh, or just hit the yes, or just click this uh, this pass button and, uh, and then click the yes over here. Uh, finally, there's a few more options here. There's no keyboard shortcut for this tab, but uh, you can uh, you can resign the game, which I'll, I'll do here since I don't want to uh, I don't want to finish a whole game in the middle of this video. But, uh, but yeah, if you wanted to resign a game for, for some reason, then you would just click this. And uh, these two buttons here can be useful sometimes. Uh, this just uh, shuffles up your rack. And then this one is if uh, if you've already put a board or put a word on the board. Like let's say I put down modifier. And for some reason, I, I think I see a better play. I don't like that anymore. Instead of hitting backspace seven times, I can click this and it'll uh, it'll reset my rack. So I'm going to go ahead and just put down modifier since I saw it, and then I will resign the game just so that I can move on to the next step. So as you'll see here, it, uh, it shows, of course, that hasty bot one since I resigned. And uh, what I can do now is I have several options. If I want to look at a more in-depth analysis, I can export this game to Quackle. And the way I'm going to do that is select a GCG since that's a game file, which is what the Quackle program ingests. I can also export a PNG or a GIF if I want to uh, po possibly share the game with, with friends or otherwise uh, memorialize it in more of a picture format. Uh, I'll talk about the examine feature in uh, just a moment. Exit takes me right back to the uh, main lobby and then rematch would, uh, would create a, another game with the, the same opponent with the same exact parameters. Woogles does have this uh, analysis feature. It's not as in depth as Quackles, but it can be handy. So the way I got into that is I clicked the examine button. And then if I wanted to just sort of go through the game and see how I played, then I'm gonna click first this double arrow to take me to the beginning. And on this uh, analyzer on the left, usually what I do is I'll just slide this auto bar over and it'll show a list of what HastyBot's top plays are. Uh, so these, it's important to know these aren't simulated in, in any way. They typically are just equity plays. They don't really take uh, strategy or board considerations into account. So definitely take these evaluations with a grain of salt, but it can be very useful for just seeing if you missed any bingos or other good uh, candidate plays. So uh, of course, HastyBot is always going to make the best play. And uh, in this in this case, it's saying that, that that maze was maybe not the best play for equity, something like Wiz. Uh, you can see here, it's telling me uh, the play, where it goes, how much it would have scored, and uh, what it would have kept, as well as the static equity value, which uh, static equity value is the 
basically the sum of how many points the place scored, as well as how many points the computer thinks that leave is worth in the vacuum. So basically what it's telling me is that the leave after whiz, it thinks is worth, is worth 3.1 points in a vacuum. So at the beginning of the game, having that leave should be worth 3.1 points to me uh, versus having an empty rack. So that's basically what this is telling me. And as such, the uh, equity engine thinks that whiz is about two points better. Uh, and I can just keep going through the whole game. I'm gonna hit the, uh, the single forward arrow to go to the next play, and then the double forward arrow if I wanna go all the way to the end of the game. Uh, so here I see uh, Keynotic was, uh, according to the bot, the best play. Uh, of course, uh, of course, exchanging here was not a good play at all. Um, but uh, you'll see it, do it doesn't light up here any of my plays. Like when I played Keynotic, it, uh, it lit up in gray since that always corresponds to the play I made. But if, uh, if you make a play that's not one of the top few, you'll have to scroll down to see it. And in this, in this case, uh, exchanging obviously is way, way, way worse than any of the other plays. But I, uh, I very much knew that going in, and uh, and yeah, you'll see here my play all the way at the bottom. Your play will always be there if it's uh, if it's not high in equity. You may just have to scroll all the way down. Uh, of course, challenging here as well is uh, is a sub suboptimal play, and uh, in this case, it actually doesn't even show up. I think if you uh, if you lose a challenge, it doesn't even show up in analyzer. So uh, so yeah, and then finally, uh, I played modifier, which I see here is is the only bingo, and then I uh, I resigned the game. So. That's uh, that's it here. If I uh, keep scoring forward, it'll just say that Hasty Bot wins and uh, I resigned. And uh, that's pretty much it in terms of the playing and uh, analysis portion. So let's now hit done to get out of the analysis and go back to the lobby by hitting exit. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, a few other other features here. But that was the uh, that was the most important part. So now hopefully you guys all know how to uh, start a game of Scrabble, find an opponent, and play the game out. Uh, there's one fun feature of uh, these puzzles that uh, is fairly new that I want to talk about. It's a great training tool. So I can either get to it by uh, hitting next puzzle over here or, uh, or puzzles on the top. I'll, uh, I'll hit over here on the, on the right. And uh, what this does is basically it takes me to this screen and this position is a puzzle. So it's, uh, it's telling me that there's a star play in this position that's significantly better than the second best play. What would Hasty Bot play? Or in other words, what is the best play? And uh, it keeps track of the rating here. It's, uh, it's basically reflective of uh, every puzzle, depending on whether more people get it right or wrong, is, uh, is given a rating and that fluctuates accordingly. And your puzzle rating is, uh, is based on the ratings of the puzzles that you either solve or, uh, or fail to solve. So uh, in this case, I believe the answer is, uh, is playing semi-noma through this I. So I would just, just like I did before, I'm gonna put down my arrow and type out the word and then I can either hit enter or solve, and if I got it correct, it'll uh, give me that ding and show me the, the three stars and tell me that I solved the puzzle in one attempt. Now, uh, what happens if I get one wrong? So I'll go to the next one. I, I see that the, the answer is uh, almost certainly gonna be etherized through this I, but let's, uh, let's say I hit Z over here, which is not correct. So I'll get that uh, more sort of uh, negative sounding ding, uh, so to speak, and uh, it'll tell me to try again that that's not the correct solution. You'll see here that after uh, two attempts, I will be allowed to get a hint. So let's say I make another good play, but uh, incorrect play of he's over here. Uh, it's gonna tell me again that I've made two attempts and that's still not correct. So I can choose a hint over here. Like I can uh, decide I want to be, I want it to tell me what the play scores, how many tiles I should play or where it goes. So uh, let's say I want to know where it goes. Um, it's going to highlight the column, and uh, now, of, of course, th this does validate what I said earlier, that etherize is going to be the best play, and then I can enter that, and it'll tell me I got it. Of course, my, my puzzle rating will still go down. The uh, Only the first attempt influences the puzzle rating. And then I could keep going forward like this. Uh, I can skip a puzzle and also uh, just give up if I think I'm not going to be able to solve it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for puzzles, and uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and head back to the lobby over here and uh, let's see I guess the only other thing I should probably cover is uh, is profiles and uh, profile info so if you want to see your own profile then you can just uh, click over here and then uh, go to profile so if I go to mine uh, it, uh, it shows me my uh, my name my picture and then uh, some info about myself and also all these stats about like how many games I've played my uh, average score things like that all my 
different uh, ratings for the different time controls. And then at the bottom, uh, it'll also show me some of my recent games. So I can also actually, from here, uh, let's say I want to analyze one of my recent games. Uh, I'll pick that game uh, or that part of a game I just played against Hastybot. I can hit this examine button down here and it'll take me exactly uh, where we were before to this, uh, to this analysis screen where I can go ahead and hit examine and then use the analyzer to look at my plays. I can do something very similar with, with other players. So if I go back to, uh, back to the lobby and uh, let's say I want to look at uh, how my friend Josh has been playing recently. So I'm going to go to Josh's profile over here. And then uh, just like with mine, it'll, uh, it'll show me some info about Josh and all of his, uh, his different stats. And if I want to see his recent games, just like before, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I can uh, go ahead and uh, examine the game. And uh, even, though this, uh, even though this wasn't my game, I can uh, go back to the analysis board over here and then uh, play through it. Um, so that can, be, uh, that can be a fun way to look and see, how, uh, see what other people have been up to on the site and uh, just get to know some of your other fellow Scrabble players. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, if you want to update your profile information, then you're just going to go to Settings over here. Uh, preferences mostly just governs what you want to see during the game. There's, uh, there's different board colors and uh, tile settings and things like that. Uh, personal info would change your, your profile. Uh, if, uh, if there's someone you've blocked before for some reason that you want to unblock, you would go through a blocked players list. Uh, and uh, I guess the last thing I'll say is there are some of these cool secret features which uh, you don't really uh, need, but uh, if you want to play some fun variants, uh, it's like ZOMG Words is, is fun. That's basically super-sized Scrabble. It's, a, I believe, a 21 by 21 game, so that's a lot of fun. And then uh, I won't explain all of these, but um, but yeah, like if you want to mute all the sounds, there's a few other fun features here. I'll uh, I'll leave you all to check out. But uh, but yeah, lots of uh, lots of fun stuff here. And then uh, also uh, I'll just put in a little plug. If you want to donate to Google, since it is a not for profit and funded fully by donations, and uh, a lot of people have spent hundreds of hours and continue to work hard to keep this running, then you can click this uh, support Google's link and uh, make a contribution. So uh, I will end the video on that note. Hope this was useful. If there's any features you want me to dive into in more depth, definitely let me know and I can make another video on that. But otherwise, hope this was useful and hope to see many, if not all of you, out there on Woogles playing very soon. Thanks, guys, for watching. Have a good one.